The kinematics part of webcam laboratory is designed for observation of moving objects. First what you have to do is start the webcam, select the webcam you would like to use. If the software asks you in a window uh, which resolution you would like to use, please choose 320 by 240 because this resolution is optimal. So now on the left hand side in the screen you will see the live feed from the camera. What you got to do is use a white neutral background with a colorful object in front. In this case what we have done is use the screw cap of a bottle, tied it on a rope so you can see that even everyday objects can be used for experiments. So now what you have to do is make the software recognize the object you are using by pressing the recognize objects button. Then a blue square with a cross in the middle will show you the recognized object. After that a small screen will appear with the number 1 showing the recognized objects. Remember there are a maximum of 3 objects you can make the software recognize. If we place a new object in front of the camera the software will automatically recognize it. If we press the recognize objects button now you will see that we have two objects recognized by the software. Now if we remove it and press the button again it will disappear. Starting your first experiment is very easy. All you have to do is choose from the right hand side in the small window from the three characteristics, movement characteristics that you can choose. X is for horizontal, Y is for vertical and XY stands for absolute values. So up here you see the settings for distance as in S, velocity as in V and acceleration as in A. Now let's try the most simple setting, movement towards the X axis and the distance. Now you can see on the right hand side that the graph already starts working. Now we make the object move and the curves start drawing on the graph. Next we mark V as in velocity and immediately you will see on the right hand side that the graph will already start showing the velocity values. So what we can do is record the curves that we are generating in the table using the start recording button. Later on uh, after you made a recording what you can do is use it for analysis in uh, a printed format or in an Excel table. Then what you can do is also stop the recording. Now obviously on the right hand side the diagram will keep on working and keep on showing you the diagrams but in the middle you can see that there are new buttons showing. One of them is for saving in a table format and the other one is printing in a diagram format. Pressing the print diagram button will activate a new window on which you can see the recording that we have just made but in one screen so you can analyze it further and you can see the diagram and the curves that we have been recording so far. You can also activate velocity for example and that will automatically show on the screen and also the Y and the XY uh, parameters. Uh, the software records all the possible data for printing or saving later. Let's close this window and press on the save table button. It will activate a new window for us in which we can assign a name to the Excel file that we are going to be saving. Pressing the save button it will save the Excel sheet and later on all the data will be available in this Excel sheet. In order for our measurements to be in real values, we can use the size calibration button. It will activate a new calibration window. Now if we know the size of a certain object or the size of the screen, we can set it on this calibration screen, assign a value to it in centimeters for example and uh, mark it. This way you can see that already the graphs are showing not pixels but centimeters in the movement. Using the properties button you can set the camera settings according to the lighting conditions you are working in. You have to know 
The better the lighting conditions, the more light you have available when you're doing the experiment, the higher the shutter speed will be for the camera. Of course, it also works the other way around. The lower the frequency, the less precise your measurements will be. So try to use optimum lighting conditions if you have a chance. On the left hand side you will find more camera settings. The top one is the general camera window where you see the camera feed. Underneath you find the object window. It deletes the background uh, behind the object so you can concentrate on the object itself. The next one is the trace window where it basically draws the trace of the movement of the object but it will disappear after a while. Now in case of pendulum like movements like in our case it's not very exciting but if you would have more complex movements like for example a wheel turning this function would be very useful. The next one is the draw window. It's very similar to the previous one but it will draw on the screen and the traces will never disappear and you will see them all the time. Now if we make the object move you can see that the drawing continues so it stays on the picture uh, as long as you keep on recording. The last tab on the left hand side is the recognition properties tab. Here we can set certain parameters that will allow better recognition for the camera and for the software of the objects. First we have the background filter. The next one is called space inside object. It basically corrects the object flows uh, within the objects themselves. Next is the minimum scale of object, which is self-explanatory, of course. After that, color tolerance. It basically is a setting where you can set the color tolerance, how much color difference uh, the software should tolerate within an object. And the next is color sensitivity. Here in the lower part, you find extra settings, for example, the highlight mode, which will simply highlight the object the software is recognizing for you to be able to see what you are measuring at the moment. The diagram filter will soften the curves of the diagrams because uh, it's possible that in some cases of measurements, imperfections can happen in mostly the case of speed data. Extra peaks will occur, as you can see, and what this function will do is basically soften these curves up. Filter redundant frames is a function that will correct the situation when older or entry level cameras or in case of bad lighting conditions a picture can be supplied twice to the software. This will correct it. The color filters can be used when the background filter is activated and it will filter out the 